The recent reveal that Animal Crossing New Horizons will be getting a Latin American localization was a pleasant surprise, as this is the first time to have Latin American Spanish instead of just European Spanish. We can see a hat that says La Isla, and a girl wearing a traditional dress from Pueblo, Mexico. After seeing this, I started to think about how localization has changed throughout the years in Animal Crossing, what this means for New Horizons, and how that connects to the broader topic of globalization. What have previous games in the series done, and how will Animal Crossing New Horizons be shaped by localization? To start, let's look at the GameCube games. There's technically three versions of this. First, Animal Forest Plus came out, which was close to the 64 version. Then, the western localization that changed some of the content. The Japanese team was interested with this, and so brought the changes back to Japan while adding in even more content, which became E+. Quite a few changes happened for the international release. Perhaps most notable is that the shrine became a wishing well. Instead of shaking the bell at New Year's like you do for the first shrine visit of the year, Hatsumode in Japan, and then getting a fortune for the new year, you toss in a coin. There's no longer the Japanese symbol for post offices on the building, but instead a window. For the igloos, a charcoal grill with blocks of mochi, although it seems to have been misidentified as a wok of tofu online, was replaced by a pot of chowder. As well, saw the animals' designs changed. Katrina's outfit went from a red hakama, where her Japanese name Hakimi comes from, white headband and robes, which is what Miko, who work at shrines, wear, to something that more closely resembles the western image of a fortune teller. Rossetti and Don Rossetti wore white shirts with what seems to be hanamaki, an article of clothing used to keep the stomach warm, but these were changed to overalls. Jane's character was redesigned in a similar way to the Pokemon Jinx, and… well, for the same reason. Many other characters like Tortimer were also changed. Annals had a table for the Cherry Blossom Festival in Animal Crossing instead of sitting on mats, and Tanabata, a day when people write down their wishes and hang them on bamboo branches, Setsubun, where children throw beans at adults pretending to be ogres, and Hinamatsuri, known as Girls' Day, where families display special dolls were taken out. There are many other differences as well. These changes are then brought back to Japan in E+, along with new content that had been added overseas like Graduation Day, which they called Leaving the Nest Day, the Harvest Festival, Sale Day, where the bamboo grass could be gotten since there's no longer any Tanabata, Explorers Day, and Groundhog Day. So, they took out Japanese things that they thought would be difficult for international fans to understand, but kept in primarily American holidays when I went back to Japan, and these changes stuck for the rest of the series. E Plus added other new things too, but we can still see an unbalance. Some of the things added don't make much sense in a Japanese context even. Graduation and moving generally take place in late March, so why do they keep the date as June in E Plus? When I talk about these real-life events with Japanese people, for most of them, they've either never heard of them, or for Thanksgiving, they only know that turkey is eaten. And I wouldn't say that tying wishes to a bamboo grass is any more difficult to understand than a meteorologist rodent. I will add though that not everything Japanese was taken out, things like the carp banners, the sword vessel, and morning aerobics were kept in. But in any case, in Japan, there are more chances to experience both cultures that we didn't get overseas. But I'm not surprised that this is the case, as this extends beyond Animal Crossing. Globalization is the growing amount of interaction and interconnections between countries around the world, which includes the spread of products, ideas, and people. This has been an increasingly important issue in the past few decades. Now, some critics of globalization believe that it will lead to the creation of a single world culture, which will be heavily influenced by the most politically and economically powerful countries like those in the West. Now, keeping that in mind, let's look at the other games in the series. In Wild World, all versions were kept the same, and there were no regional differences. Almost all of the cultural items and real-world events were taken out, like Halloween, Thanksgiving, and Christmas. But look at the great holidays we got instead, like Ladi Day, everyone's favorite Acorn Day, and don't forget about Yay Day! This is essentially how some people see globalization working, that's going to take away local cultures and everything will become bland and monotonous. City folk went in a different direction and brought back real-world events, added new ones, and put in localization differences from the start. Festival and Bunny Day were the new major events added, and the localized smaller events were Setsubun, Hinamatsuri, Groundhog Day, and some parts of Europe had different dates for Mother's and Father's Day. Cultural items like the Kotatsu and New Year's Zodiac items were added too. New Leaf was similar overall to city folk in this sense, but more localized small events were added and new regions were added like Korea. The cardboard cutouts that were new to the game were employed in these events to give them more substance, rather than just receiving an item. There were also public works projects that are Japanese style. Still, the major events all have western influence, although the New Year's countdown would be hard to pinpoint. 
This is something that critics of globalization point to is a sign that local culture is being taken over by more dominant cultures worldwide. In order to have worldwide appeal, Animal Crossing went with Western holidays for the major events in the game, and as we saw at the GameCube games, character designs were also affected by Western perspectives. This is something that I've noticed in real life as an American. As I began to travel and live abroad, I started to realize more and more how dominant my culture is around the world. Besides the McDonaldization effect, within the US we tend to see not as much of an effect on other cultures. While we do have cultural diversity, it tends to be centered around the own cultures of people in an area. For example, because of German heritage, a lot of places will have Oktoberfest, and many areas will offer TV channels in Spanish because of the number of Spanish speakers. It can be hard to find even movies from other English-speaking countries in local movie theaters, but in Japan, even rural theaters will have movies from a variety of countries. Now, of course, there are people who are interested in foreign cultures like K-pop and anime fans, but these things are still considered to be niche. A slightly different example would be is that some people dislike that nearly half the winners of Eurovision are songs in English. And I want to be clear that I'm not personally blaming anyone or any country for this or saying that you're bad if you're not investing time into foreign cultures. That's fine. I do wish that there were more options for people so we could make our own choices rather than be put into a box. There are so many amazing movies I would have missed out on if I was forced to only watch movies out of Hollywood that I think other Americans would also like. On the other hand, supporters of globalization claim that developing countries adopting Western culture, such as Western-style clothes, is a personal choice. In addition, the world being more connected has also led to opportunities for less dominant cultures to be recognized and supported. In this way, instead of things becoming homogenous, people would be able to appreciate other cultures while also holding onto their own. When I look at New Horizons, I see evidence of things moving in the right direction in the Animal Crossing series. New Horizons now localizing for Latin America and allowing your island to be in the northern or southern hemisphere are signs that the game is moving away from the focus on having people conform to the global north and allowing people to have experiences that more closely match their own lives. And, you might have thought before, if they didn't like Wild World taking out culture or other games being in culture, what gives? My point is that I'd like there to be more of a balance in what cultures are being represented, but I am happy with what I'm seeing. I think that this is not limited to Animal Crossing, and that we are seeing a shift towards people wanting cultures to be preserved and experienced instead of conforming to Western, and more specifically, American standards. The original Sailor Moon manga translation in the 90s was mirrored to be read from left to right, names were changed, cram school became pewter class, etc. But the growing number of manga fans wanted to read more authentic manga, which later became the standard. Series like Lucky Star that are based very closely on Japanese pop culture and need long lists of translation notes in the back have been able to become popular because international fans have that interest. On a different note, in Japan the government is trying to use the 2020 Olympics as a platform to start having Japanese names be kept in the original family name, personal name order in English, like is already the case in Korea and China. Four names already keep their original order in Japanese. This want for change can be aided by the internet. Now I can choose to watch films from around the world through Netflix. And in part because Netflix will caption their original content in as many languages as possible, I think I've been seeing more people be interested in content from other countries, like the popularity of the Japanese reality TV show Terrace House Overseas. Yes, there have always been people interested in other cultures, but the internet has made things a lot more accessible. I won't make any broad statements about globalization, but I'm optimistic about the way that things are developing in Animal Crossing New Horizons and in other facets of pop culture. I hope that as things progress, we'll see more balanced cultural exchange across the world that facilitates cross-cultural understanding and respect. One of my wishes for New Horizons is that it will be easier for us to experience original events. In the past, you'd have to know someone in real life, or try to find someone online on your own if you want to experience another region's content. I'd like this to be more accessible, either by being able to change your own region easily to anywhere across the world, being able to experience other cultures' events in your town automatically, or having something similar to Club Tournament, but for going to other towns. We'll have to wait and see for now what content gets added to the game, but from what we've seen, it looks like the localization for New Horizons will follow the trend of Animal Crossing games having more real-life cultural influence as the series progresses and more cultures having their chance to be represented. In any case, I'm interested in getting my hands on new information and seeing what's in store for us in Animal Crossing, New Horizons, and beyond. Thank you for watching my video! I've been really blown away recently from all the likes, comments, and subs I've been receiving, and I want to thank you all! I hope to see you again soon!